Okay, you guys. <laughs> I'm drinking hot tea. Cheers. So today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about words that change your brain. Now, I hope everybody's feeling good today. I hope everybody's great. It's cold. I don't know how cold it is. It's not super, super cold, but cold enough that I got to warm my hands on this cup of coffee. I'm standing here in the porch looking out over the lake. I'm in the Adirondacks and it is absolutely a beautiful day. A little windy, a little chilly, but crisp and beautiful. And I got out. I have now done, um, let's see, today is Friday. So I've now done four paintings in a row. I started on Monday. I told myself I was going to do a painting every day starting Monday. And so uh, last night I, I um, backpacked through the woods to the neighbor's dock and, uh, and uh, painted a picture of our camp from the dock. So anyway, cheers. Uh, terrific. Thanks for joining me today. Hope everybody is doing okay. The goal of these dailies is to keep you feeling good, make you feel good about yourself. I've heard from so many of you around the world who are uh, tuning in every day or tuning in whenever you can, and that really means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you so much. I am honored by your presence, and uh, I know it's a lot of work for you guys to, to hit that button and come in here every day. <laughs> but I know a lot of you are working, or a lot of you are working in your studios or going to work and, and, you know, trying to get your lives a little bit back to normal. Uh, some of you are still in quarantine. Uh, if you are still, in, wherever you are, just if you, you know, make a comment that says, you know, here's where I live, and just go ahead and put a yes or a no, uh, meaning I'm still in quarantine, yes or I'm not, because I know some states still are. Um, uh, we are at level three here in the Adirondacks, uh, phase three, meaning that things are opening up and getting better. And uh, so that's a beautiful thing. I was in Texas. Things were opening up and getting better there. Uh, there are more cases being reported. There's no doubt about that, but there's also more testing going on. And so uh, we'll find out how this all works out. But in the meantime, uh, we're here to talk about art. We're not here to talk about the um, the coronavirus or the quarantine or any of the other things that are going on in the world that are just freaking us all out. So today I am going to talk about words that change your brain and how that's going to impact you, your art, your art sales, uh, the people around you. And so I think it's some pretty good, interesting new research. Um, not my research, certainly, but uh, today also... I want to remind you that, uh, and, and by the way, somebody uh, who's doing comments, uh, people are always asking questions in the comments. I missed a website or something. I'm not holding up my little signs today because I'm holding my, my cup of hot tea. Mmm, this is strawberry tea. Yes, strawberry tea. Anyway, um, uh, we, we will um, ask you if I give a website or something, put it in the comments for others to see. And some of you are automatically doing that anyway. I've been going through the comments typically late night, about you know midnight last night, uh, going through responding to some of you. And I can't respond to everybody, but thank you for making comments. It means a lot to me and it helps me get a feel for where you are, what you do, what your conditions are, you know, what, what kind of work you do, what, what's on your mind, what kind of things you would like me to deal with. I got a nice note from somebody this morning and they wanted me to deal with, with um, some, I can't even remember what it was now, but uh, <laughs> I will get to that. I'm trying to make a list of everything and trying to get to it. So uh, a couple of things, in the month of June, uh, we are giving away a, a full registration, your choice, to the Plen Air Convention, which takes place in August in Santa Fe, which is going to be it's going to be smaller this year. There's no doubt, um, but so far we've got 600 registered. We don't know exactly what the state's going to make us do, but we will do whatever they tell us to do. And uh, I suspect that we're not going to be allowed to add more than you know. Uh, a few more, but I don't know that for sure. So if you're thinking about going, just know there's a guarantee if we have to postpone, cancel, reschedule, whatever, you can get your money back. 
that's the deal with all of our conferences and events this year uh, uh, because we want to make sure you feel safe making that choice. So to win that prize, you go to StreamlineGiveaway.com. My company is Streamline, and uh, the Streamline family of products, which is video and magazines and, and a lot of other stuff to help artists around the world. Uh, so StreamlineGiveaway.com, you only need to enter one time. Okay, next, um, I, I announced, boy, I'll tell you, I, everybody jumped on this. Uh, I announced uh, two days ago, Plen Air Live, which is going to be a virtual online global experience. We are going to engage Plen Air people, Plen Air painters, Plen Air conference organizers, Plen Air people that you know follow Plen Air painters around, anybody who's involved in Plen Air. We're going to engage the world, and we're going to do that on July 15th. Uh, we are already starting to realize that we're going to face some technology change, uh, technology challenges because of the quantity. Uh, we've had well over 800 people sign up so far, and uh, the, now the, this is not registration. This is just signing up to get on the wait list for when we announce uh, because we're going to have some limitation on technology. I don't know yet if it's going to be a thousand, if it's going to be more than a thousand, uh, but uh, we know that technology is going to limit us, but you're going to want to be a part of that. This is something for the world. Already artists from all over the world are we're hearing from, so because uh, we have a place where you can put that information. So if you want to get the information on this uh, global virtual event, uh, go to plenairlive.com. Now, plen is P-L-E-I-N. Some people say plain, and there's not a, the French say plan, but there's not really a correct, you can say whatever you want to say. Um, that's the opening of my plan air podcast to say you can say whatever you want to do. So if you haven't heard the podcast, make sure you go there, plan air podcast, I interview all the great artists and, and a lot of other interesting people that, that I think you need to hear from. Wow, this is helping warming me up. Yesterday, I announced that I'm going to be giving away uh, two DVDs today. The first DVD I'm giving away is Seascapes with Gene Perry. Fabulous Seascapes DVD, painting water and rock and moving water. And that's going to Paul Gustafson in Minnesota. Gustafson is such a great Minnesota name. I have a friend named Gustafson from Minnesota, but not Paul. So congratulations to Paul. Likes and thumbs up for Paul. Uh, comments to uh, at, we're on three platforms this morning. Uh, we are on uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and YouTube, and a lot of people watching from what I can tell. Also, uh, we're giving away today John Cosby's Impressionism, Plein Air Impressionism DVD, and that's going to Brenza, Brenda Hosjan, Brenda Hosjan in Kingston, Ontario. Congratulations, Brenda. Now, Brenda. We have an employee in Kingston, Ontario, or a, I should say a team member. I hate the word employee. Anyway, uh, congratulations. I hear it's beautiful up there. So today at 3, we have two wonderful videos for you. Every day at 3 p.m., uh, we're giving you video samples uh, so you can learn to paint, see how somebody deals with a particular issue, uh, get to know the artist a little bit. And today at 3, we have... Um, Sherry Christensen, boy, I'll tell you, the memory started to go. Uh, Sherry Christensen, and it's the color of white. You know, one thing we've realized, we're trying to do some, some videos on some very specific things. Uh, we did one on trees, for instance, with Paul Crater, which was huge. And we realized that we all struggle with white. The idea that white is influenced by all the colors around it, if you're painting on a warm day, a cool day, etc., uh, and so we asked Sherry Chris Christensen, who she does all these beautiful uh, ducks and chickens and cows, and, and, and she really knows how to make the whites work because she's, you know, the whites tend to, to move from uh, warm to cool and cool to warm and so on, and, and how, do you, how do you turn that form? And that's, you know, the, there's the famous painting of the white dress by, um, who is it? Uh, boy, the brain is going today. <laughs> anyway... How he did that white dress it blows me away. So we all need to figure out how to paint whites. And so Sherry Christensen is going to show you today at 3 p.m. This is a brand new 
video segment that you've never seen before. That's at 3 p.m. And you find that on not on my channel, not on my personal channel, but on Streamline Art Video on Facebook or Streamline Art Video on YouTube. And you can go there and hit subscribe so it just pops up, all right? The next thing is today at 9, we're giving a second sample for you at 9 p.m. so that different time zones can get a chance to see things during daylight or, you know, some people are telling me they're getting up in the middle of the night to watch these videos because they're in other countries. I heard from, somebody said yesterday, where is Kashmir? Because we heard from Kashmir. I think that's so cool. Anyway, uh, 9 p.m. watercolor portraits, seven steps to watercolor portraits with the amazing Michael Holter. And uh, you'll love that. And so that's, if you're a watercolorist, by the way, if you're not, there's so much to learn. Uh, every artist has techniques and ways they approach things that are worth, worth learning. Okay, today, today's prizes, I have three prizes today and they're all the same thing. I am uh, depleting our prize closet. <laughs> I got another email this morning. Uh, they said, don't give away any more. I, I had been given away. Uh, I gave away so many uh, brush clips that they don't have very many left to sell and we're waiting for a shipment to come in. So I can't give away any more brush clips. Easel, but if you want one of the few remaining, it's easelbrushclip.com. Uh, I can't give away any more of my grayscale palettes uh, because we're running out of these because uh, they're made out of plexiglass and, and there's a massive run on plexiglass because everybody's using it to, to uh, put it up in their stores so that you don't have human contact with people. And as a result, uh, our suppliers, we have three different suppliers on that and we're having trouble getting those. So there's very few left of those available. So they said, don't give any more away. I do have though, value specs and the value specs help you see the values of what you're painting so that you can really get your values right. I am completely surprised by the values of the lake today because I thought it was a lot brighter than it is, but I'm really seeing a big difference. Anyway, today we're giving away three pair of value specs. And, um, and by the way, these are on our store at Streamline Art Video or Lilidol Art Video or OutdoorPainter.com. Uh, any of our sites, uh, these are on there. So I'll give away three pair, one outside of the United States and two inside the United States. And so if you want to win value specs, the way to do that is to put your, your information in, not your information, but just make a comment. Uh, if you're outside of the United States, make sure you say where you're from so we know. And comments, Christina, uh, who's been working 78 days straight in a row, uh, and Bryant, who's been working 78 days, days straight in a row. They will get your, um, your comments. Uh, they will find random winners and then we will announce them tomorrow, Saturday. All right. Now tomorrow's going to be an interesting day because I like to go to the farmer's market here. The tomatoes are the best. And, uh, and unfortunately I normally go, uh, uh a little later, but I'm going to have to go to the farmer's market and then get back here now remember, we're in a boat only access place, and so we have to get in a boat, go for about 10 minutes across to what we call the landing. The landing is where we keep our car, we dock, we get in our car, we drive into town, which is about, oh, about 30 minutes. Uh, we drive into Saranac Lake, New York, and then uh, we'll go to the farmer's market, get back here, get in the boat, get back here in time for the broadcast tomorrow. So. Uh, Anyway, that's what's going on tomorrow, so if I'm a little late, you'll understand, but hopefully I won't be. So, I have been one who has been uh, preaching the idea that um, your mindset impacts everything in your life. And I really am a big believer of that. As a matter of fact, I've seen it come true in my own life. I've seen things happen that have really impacted me. Excuse me one second. So I, I, I wanted to talk to you about something that I was just reading, and I, I am trying to learn and grow constantly. I have, uh, I'm juggling right now about six or eight new books. Uh, I'm always looking at books. I'm always taking online courses. I'm always trying to get my brain on fire about things. But your mindset impacts everything that you do in your life. And if you don't believe that, 
Um, just think about any time that you get worried and you get a stomach ache when you get worried or uh, th there's something that's concerning you and, and you, know, you get nervous or you get bothered. That's the impact of your mindset. And I, there's a book called Words That Change Your Brain. And this book, I thought, was really, it had some really, really good points. Now, there's a lot more to it than what I'm going to talk about. But I've always talked about how, how you approach things and, and your words and everything that you use impacts your brain. But now there's scientific evidence. So there's an area called the frontal lobe of your brain. And the frontal lobe activates your logic, your reasoning, your rational thought, and it also, your frontal lobe, lobe can go into a deactivation mode. It can go into a fight or flight mode. So what they have found is that words of encouragement and love actually increase logical thinking. They increase, they activate the frontal lobe and it increase your logical thinking. And, of course, logical thinking is everything when it comes to running your life and, and, and planning your life. And uh, what they've also found out is that negative words deactivate the frontal lobe. They shut it down. Uh, it, negativity triggers what they call the fight or flight syndrome. You know, fight or flight is when we, you know, we, we can't make too many decisions. We're like, we're, we're like keyed up and we're just like, Got to do this or do this. You know, it's everything's black and white. You can't make a lot of decisions. You can't, can't think things through clearly. And so what they're learning is that criticism triggers, uh, criticism rarely triggers any change. You know, a lot of people think that, well, if I'll be critical, I'll, I'll be critical, well-meaning to be critical, but I'll be critical of this person or this idea or whatever. And it turns out that criticism negatively impacts and puts you into fight or flight almost immediately. Now, there are some of us who have learned to get around that. For instance, I welcome criticism. I don't like it. I honestly don't like it. Uh, it feels a little weird to me, but if, if I'm talking to an artist and I need them to criticize my painting, I need them to, to be as honest as they possibly can be. But the ones who do it well always look for something positive to say first. You know, I really like the way you handled your paint here. I really like the thickness of your brush strokes. I really like this or that. But I'd like to also point out that there's, you know, there's a couple things that you need to change, you know, your composition or whatever. But most of us can't handle criticism very well. I don't know about you. I'd like to hear your opinion on that. But words will either activate or suppress the frontal lobe, and the frontal lobe is controlling so much. Words also release chemicals. They release uh, hormones, they release stress hormones, uh, they re release endorphins, and so these things impact your mood and your ability to think and your ability to perform. And so uh, negative words release essentially stress chemicals. They put you into fight or flight, and as a result, um, uh, you, you, you don't get any positive benefit out of that negative stuff. And this is, this is your own words to yourself. If you're negative thinking, if you're saying things to yourself negatively, and we all fight that. This is what uh, they call the reptilian brain. Reptilian brain was developed, you know, way, way back when, when Adam and Eve were born. And the idea is like your brain is constantly scanning for tigers. You're constantly scanning for who's going to jump me and kill me, right? What, you're constantly scanning for rattlesnakes or whatever it is, and your brain automatically defaults to the negative. And so you actually have to take control of your brain and default to the positive. So uh, your negative thoughts impact so much, and I have negative thoughts just like everybody else does. And the only difference is I tell myself, I catch myself with a negative thought, and I'll say, huh, that's not like me. I, you know, I don't mean that. I actually mean this. I actually go, go through that process in my head to shift myself out of the negative and push myself into the positive. Because when you get negative thoughts, 
you start having negative response with your body. It, it impacts your immune system. Now look at what we're going through right now. Look at what the world is going through. First off, uh, I, I was communicating with somebody yesterday who sent me a nice note and they said, look, I've been stuck at home this entire time by myself, no human contact with anybody. You know, groceries are being delivered and dropped off at the door. I have not had any in-person and I, I thrive on that in-person and when I'm alone, it makes me crazy, right? So uh, when we're in a situation like this, we're oftentimes ruminating about the worst that can happen. This is gonna come back. Am I gonna go through this the, the rest of my life? Are we gonna be wearing masks for the rest of our lives? Are we gonna be having seasons where things get shut down, where my work gets shut down, my business gets shut down? Look, I, I'm going through it. You know, I, I own a small business. My business makes this stuff, like these videos and magazines and things for you guys, and it's been, it's been damaged. There's no doubt about it. I had to lay off a bunch of people. Um, I'm hanging on by deer, uh, by threads sometimes, and, and it is not easy. But I had to change my mindset. The second day, I was going downhill, and I realized that if I didn't change my mindset, I was just going to make stupid decisions, and I wasn't going to feel good. So I just told myself, this is opportunity, and this will make things better ultimately. And just that little switch in my brain now, I have to constantly remind myself of this. So I was, I was last night, I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was ruminating, you know, all this stuff going on and thinking about how the world's going to change and how are we going to respond and, and, you know, how the, the sadness of all this and how everybody's feeling. And, and it just, I started really getting worked up. And then I just had to kind of say my prayers and, and, and get, my, get my head in the right place. When you realize that you have negativity going on, you are in control. You have to flip the switch and turn it into positivity. And by doing that, I was able to go to sleep, woke up in a good mood, feeling good, and realizing that we just have to flip that switch. So words activate or suppress your, your uh, frontal lobe, and that affects your immune system. So when you're watching the news all the time, I wrote about this last week in my Sunday coffee blog. When you're watching the news all the time, you're getting, first off, you're getting the same story over and over and over and over and over again, essentially, you know, and, 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 you know, some people will sit there and watch one show after another, after another, after another. It's just like beating you over the head with a hammer, negativity. And, and so I don't want to put my head completely in the sand, but I figure up here, like I'm isolated, and so I'm just looking at this and saying to myself, if something really bad happens, I'm going to hear about it eventually. My wife will tell me, my kids will tell me, somebody will tell me. But I am not watching the news. I'm trying to stay off of social media other than just touching base on this and, uh, you know, a couple other things. And I'm not sitting there reading all this negativity every night because i got to stay upbeat. i got to keep you guys upbeat. How can I be upbeat if I'm negative, right? And so uh, watch your words, watch your self-talk, but also think about how do the words that you use impact other people? Think about, for instance, your students. If you're teaching art, how, uh, how about how you approach things? I was on a conference call with someone the other day, actually a group of people in my board meeting, and I noticed I was paying attention to uh, someone had done something really kind of stupid. And I noticed how people approached that person. And one of the people uh, was very negative. I can't believe you did that. That was really a, a, a bad idea, you know, and just being critical. And I could just watch this guy's body language, just watch him shrink. Now, on the other hand, two other people came in and they said, you know, you did this right, and you did this right, and we really feel good about this. Have you thought about this. In other words, they didn't even say, but they just said, have you thought about this? Here's another option. Here's another direction you could have taken. So they took a positive. It's like you want to be around those people. You want to be around people who are positive. And I have learned uh, by experience when I was a teenager, I was a negative kid. I was so negative that I lost a lot of my friends and I had to reinvent myself. And when I did, everything changed.
because I want to be a positive person to be around. I don't want to be a negative person. So think about your students. Also think about your marketing. Think about how you package things on your website, how you package things in your ads. Are you being positive? What about when you're dealing with collectors? You know, when, when you're dealing with collectors, you want to be positive. You want to help them see the positives in you. And, and I, you know, I can't tell you how many times I hear artists say, well, you know, I really didn't do a very good job on that. And um, I had a visitor here at the lake one time, and he took me aside. I walked him through, and every time we passed one of my paintings, I, I made some kind of a negative comment, like, well, I didn't do a very good job on that, or I had a problem with that, or I'm not very good yet. And this guy stopped, and before he got in the car to leave, he said, Eric, there's one thing I want to tell you. I said, what's that? He said, you are a very negative person. And I was shocked because I thought I was a positive person. He said, do you realize that every time we walked by one of your paintings, you had a critical comment? He said, do you know that's negatively impacting your brain, that your self-talk is negatively impacting your brain. He said, what if you just don't say anything? You, if you're not feeling it, just don't say anything. It'd be better off. But, and, and you know, if, if you're thinking it, try to switch it. And he was so right. And so I tried very hard, but a lot of us, you know, I, I, I remember being in an art gallery and I was, uh, I was with, uh, I was in the gallery that I'm in, um, right, that I'm currently in. And I remember walking through that and they were touring me in the gallery and showing me my paintings. And I saw this one painting that I had done and I was not feeling it. And I thought, well, you know, five years earlier I did that. I've come so far since then. And I was about to make a negative comment. And I bit my tongue. And this woman that was with us said, by the way, this is my favorite painting. And I'm thinking about making payments on it to buy it. What if I had said something negative? I would have impacted it. So our negativity or our positivity affects everything we do. It affects our marketing. It affects how we deal with our customers. And, and they say that positivity, words of love and encouragement, make us feel better. And, and think about this. If somebody says something positive to you, they say, uh, you know, Congratulations, you know, you really did a great job on that. I'm really, really proud of you. What do you feel? I mean, sometimes you get goosebumps, right? So you have a physiological change because chemicals are being released into your system. But what if somebody starts being negative? You ever be with someone and you say, listen, I've got some bad news, and you give them bad news, and they sit down. Negativity drains your energy. It drains you. So. You, you've got to think about the things that, that you're doing to your customers, to your marketing, to your students, and to yourself, to your family members. You want to, you know, what if you said to your customers, man, I, I really love your taste. I really like, you know, they say, you know, what you say, which are the three paintings in this gallery you like the best? They say, I like that one, and I like that one, and I like that one. She said, man, I really love your taste. They're going to get their endorphins. They're going to feel better. Right now, I don't want you to lie to people. I don't want you to just randomly stroke people, but look for opportunities to find something good. You know, my dad always said, uh, if you can't find something nice to say some, to somebody, don't say it at all, right? It's so, so true. And we tend to lean negative because of that reptilian brain. So keep it positive. Negativity drains us. It impacts your immune system. I heard from a friend, she said, I was so worried about all this COVID stuff that I, I screwed up my immune system. I got the shingles. And I, I mean, you know, it's, it's, this stuff happens. People get heart attacks. People get all kinds of problems because of a negative immune system. So keep it positive. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say today. I am really proud of you guys for hanging in there with me. I'm, I'm really honored that you would stick with me for 78 days. Can you believe it? Wow. And now I want you to, to look for a way today, specifically today. It's Friday. we got the weekend ahead of us. I want you to look for a way to get yourself in a good mood. No matter what's going on, no matter how you're feeling about things, no matter how stressed you are, no how bothered you are, find a way to get yourself in a good mood. I have one of those little uh, Wi-Fi speakers and Bluetooth speakers, 
And um, I'm going to set that thing up and get my phone out and just start cranking some upbeat music and just trying to get myself feeling good. I'm going to go for a walk in the woods today. I'm not going to work much today. I'm going to kind of take part of the day off. I have some things I have to do. But I'm just going to get out there and treat myself to feeling good. Because if we don't do that, then it's going to come down on us. Anyway, remember today at 3 p.m., the Color of White with Sherry Christensen at 9 p.m., Michael Holter. Don't forget, if you want to enter the Streamline giveaway for the Plein Air Convention or the FACE Conference, StreamlineGiveaway.com. And remember, if you want to get on the Plein Air Live list, we're going to, as soon as we, we by the way, we got a, a lineup that's already coming together. I can't announce any names yet, um, but we got a lineup that's coming up together for this thing. And like I said, first come, first serve. The first people who sign up on the list, uh, when we, we do the notifications, you're gonna have a little bit of time to make a decision. You're gonna get first dips. And so uh, if you're later in the list, then you're gonna get contacted later. So you wanna be in that first, first grouping. Right now, uh, as of last night, we're at about 800 uh, that have already expressed interest. This is 800 around the world. So go to plenairlive.com. I'm going to come up to the comments real quickly and say hello. Hello. All right. This was much need for me today. All right. Good. That's good. Visiting. Uh, can't say a name. Okay. Happy painting. Please announce email. I'm not sure what that means. My email? My email is B as in boy. Eric, E-R-I-C, Rhodes, R-H-O-A-D-S, at Gmail. All right. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks for holding it all together. Greetings from St. Louis. Greetings from Santa Fe. All right. New Hampshire. It's gorgeous right now, New Hampshire. Yes, and we're going there for Fall Color Week. We're going to be in New Hampshire. Uh, I'll, I'll just mention two other things. Fall Color Week. I have these retreats that I do, and we just get about, usually about 100 of us together. We go painting every day together. We usually break into a couple groups. We paint together, we eat together, we drink together, we paint portraits together, we just have fun. Now, we're doing it. Uh, we're doing one in New Hampshire this fall called Fall Color Week, and we're gonna paint where the Hudson River School painters painted, beautiful fall color. Eric Capel, the artist, is gonna be there taking us to his favorite spots because he lives there. And I also have an event that I do here in the Adirondacks and we're gonna cut off registration pretty quickly. Maybe, maybe today, I'm not sure. We're running out of space because it is now the largest we've ever done. We have, um, I think actually yesterday, as of yesterday, we had 113 signed up and the 114 is the largest we've ever had, but I heard from somebody this morning who's coming. So that'll at least equal it. And uh, if you are willing to like hang in dorm rooms, big dorm rooms that have bunk beds and be separated and have shared bathrooms, but like each of you would have your own shower and your own toilet and so on so that you don't have to even share that stuff, then that's how we're gonna social distance. We don't have a lot of private rooms, but we have a few and I think most of those are gone. But it's going to be a great time. We're outdoors most of the time. There's a great big dining room so we can keep our distance. But we will have fun. So that's the uh, Paint the Adirondacks. You can find both of those events at publishersinvitational.com. That's publishersinvitational.com. I'm also, I got somebody called yesterday. It's our, our email yesterday. It said, tell me more about Russia. I have a, a trip I'm planning for September of 21. We're gonna go inland into the small villages where they wear costumes and they're very traditional. Uh, we're gonna small villages of Russia, some of the old villages. We're also gonna do St. Petersburg and Moscow. We're gonna paint, we're gonna to tour, we're gonna to see the museums. We have a private, get this, private entry into the Hermitage, one of the best and most amazing worlds, uh, museums in the world, private. Your, means you and me and my little group, and it's going to be limited to 50 people. We're going to be privately in uh, one of the th probably three best museums in the world, right? So this is going to be so cool. 
And we're going to be painting, we're going to be meeting people, we're going to meet up with some great Russian artists. We have, uh, we have locations we're going to where we have found the specific places where the great Russian artists historically painted, including the academic Dasha, which is in the middle of the country, and it is absolutely stunning. But also another area where Levitan, Shishkin, and, and so many others painted, and so we're going to be going there. So that's... If you want to sign up to get on the list for the information, you go to paintrussia.com. And I just got uh, the information from the travel company this week. I, I've been so busy, I haven't even looked at it yet. But I'll be announcing the pricing, and we're going to have the sign-ups. And then after we get our 50, we'll have a wait list in case somebody drops out. But that's going to be a lifetime, life-changing trip. Russia is amazing. I've been there several times. I have a lot of friends there. It's not like what you see in the movies. That element does exist, but that's kind of, think about this. I mean, people, <laughs> my ex-mother-in-law uh, always, she, she didn't want to come to America because she had seen the movies about the gangsters in Chicago. That's kind of how, how it is in Russia. The stuff that you see in the movies, you know, you don't really see it. I've never seen it. I'm sure it exists, but it's, it's, it's not part of everyday life. It's a pretty normal place. Anyway, uh, it's going to be a really cool thing. So, have a terrific day. Uh, cheers to everybody. Keep yourself upbeat. Get some movement in your body. Have some fun. and Because uh, we like to have fun. Are you having fun yet? All right. <laughs> All right. I will uh, go away. You guys up there, the camera on YouTube, I'm sorry I haven't been looking at that camera. I had to put it in a different place today. And make sure you leave comments and say where you're from. I will turn uh, the cameras around so you can see the lake. And uh, I did a painting yesterday, but I, it's on my easel here, but I'm going to turn around so you can see the lake. All right, here we go. Now, YouTubers, I'm going to have to turn you around this way. All right. Have a great day, and uh, enjoy this little moment of peace with the lake. Take a deep breath. Blow it out. Take another deep breath. Count to three. Three, two, one. Exhale. There you go. That's what we do. All right. Have a great day. Bye. We'll see you.